Hi everybody, my name is Stephanie and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I kind of want to share my experience with why it is so important to talk to your parents about mental health problems, even though I know it is terrifying. It is extremely important. I'm going to take this video as an opportunity to share that with you. Um, I'm also going to be sharing a little bit of like how I worked it out eventually with my parents. It took a lot. It was a really long learning process, but I think I finally found something that kind of works with my family. Um, I'm going to put a disclaimer here that this method is not going to work for everybody. Obviously, parent-child dynamics are different in every family, and so this is just what happened to work well with my family and my relationship with my parents. So let's get into the video. Um, I guess we'll start back before I really had any ability to talk to my parents about mental health. This would be back in 2013 when I was a junior, entering as a junior in high school. This is really when my eating disorder and depression and self-harm really started to take a toll on me. Um, it started becoming very obvious to a lot of people that I had a problem. I personally did not think I had that big of a problem at the time, but later did find out that yes, I really did need help. Um, but so this is where a lot of people like attribute this to bad parenting. My parents were some of the last people to realize I had a problem, but it's not like they didn't have suspicions and they didn't think something was going on because they definitely did, but I was really good at hiding it and these disorders make people very manipulative and deceptive and I was really good at hiding it, as horrible as that is to say, I was really good at hiding it. Um, I made sure I ate more in front of my parents, but in order to do that, that, mean I, that means I didn't eat anything when I was at school. I would take every opportunity to over-exercise at school. I would exercise during lunch rather than sitting down and eating with my friends. I would go to the track and I would run. And so people at school cut onto this really, really fast because they saw my weight dropping. My parents just saw it as I was making smarter food choices and I started working out, which I hadn't done before. But they didn't know that I wasn't eating at all during school and then also working out during school hours. So they did notice the weight drop, but they saw it very, very slowly since they were seeing me every day. And so it wasn't as dramatic to them. And they did get to a point where they said, hey, like you've really kind of lost too much weight. And I told them, this is the deceptive part of me, oh yeah, I know. And I told them that I was trying to regain a little bit of weight, but I wanted to make sure I did it in muscle. And so I needed a fancy scale, like the ones that tell you your like estimated body fat percentage, body water percentage, bone percentage, all that kind of stuff. And like they agreed because they thought I was going to use it to try and gain some weight and monitor through that. So that went on and I was, I was not talking to them at all. I really wasn't talking to anybody about what was going on. I was keeping it all to myself. Then came the time where, as I've talked about this in a previous video, that they discovered my journal that had, I had been tracking my weight, my food intake, my thoughts every week. And I had been tracking that for months in this journal. So my parents found this and there was no more hiding it. Every, everything was out in the open. I had talked about the fact I had self-harmed. Um, I had talked about using laxatives and diet pills and all of that kind of stuff. There was no more secrets. Everything was out. And so obviously I was taken to the doctor, diagnosed with an eating disorder and depression and went through all the medical steps to get myself stable again. So during that time, really everything was very focused on medically stabilizing my body. There wasn't a whole lot of emphasis on the mental just because until my body was nourished to think properly, there wasn't gonna be a whole lot of progress made in the mentality. So they kind of skipped over that for the temporary. So once I was released to go back home, um, I still had to check back in with a doctor pretty regularly, but I wasn't at the doctor's every day anymore. And so this gave us the opportunity to start working in with therapy. 
So I started seeing a family therapist, and this is where the first step of communication really got brought to the forefront. Um, and one thing that I really did like about this was that my therapist made us agree that we would not talk about my mentality around food except for our once a week family therapy in therapy because at the time me and my family didn't have the best communication skills we really struggled with communicating with one another and so us trying to communicate in that kind of like on a daily basis and trying to talk about my emotions wasn't going to work very well it just ended up in a lot of fights and anger and that brings me to another point. My parents did not react well to finding out about my eating disorder and everything. They were angry, but as things cooled off a little bit and as we like started talking in therapy and stuff, I started to realize I thought they were angry because they were mad that I had an eating disorder. Um, I thought they were like ashamed of it and whatever. And so I found out they were angry not because I had an eating disorder. They understood that was something kind of out of my control. They didn't fully understand it yet. Um, that would come later, but they did understand that I wasn't in fully full control of it. Um, they were angry that I had lied so much. They were angry how many times they had asked me directly, like, are you eating? Are you exercising too much? Like, what's your weight? And I lied to their face. Um, so that really, I think it was more they felt betrayed that I would go and do this and not reach out to them when I was struggling. So I think that was where a lot of the hurt and anger actually came from, and less so because of what I was doing. Although they were actually legitimately angry that I was self-harming, because my mom especially saw it as a very permanent thing. Like, I still to this day have scars from very early on with my self-harming. And so that was more of, she was a little bit more angry about that. But so in family therapy, we had these rules that we couldn't talk outside of family therapy about my thoughts and feelings around food and my depression. And this really worked for us well. Um, it made it so that we had a mediator there when we did talk about it. And so everybody had the opportunity to say what they needed to say without having somebody else attack them or whatever. And so it really helped having somebody directing the conversation and really making sure everybody's points were heard. I didn't stick with therapy very long. Um, I had tried several therapists and while the method of therapy was kind of ideal, I never really clicked with the therapist. And part of this I think comes from my extreme social anxiety and so having to talk to somebody who doesn't really know me on a day-to-day -day basis about this kind of stuff was extremely difficult. And so eventually I kind of gave up on the whole therapy thing. Um, had gone back several times, just couldn't find a therapist that really clicked. But when I finally made the decision that I wasn't going to go to therapy anymore, me and my mom had kind of sat down and talked. I did a lot more of the talking with my mother just because I had naturally always been closer to her and she had dealt with some depression and anxiety when she was younger, so she understood the mental health aspects a little bit better than my dad. But my mom said, okay, well, if you're not going to go to therapy, you can't continue to just not talk. And so we kind of came to this agreement, well, agreement that I would talk to her if something was really going on. Um, a lot easier said than done. It was really difficult. I really struggled with it. And probably like throughout my junior and senior year of high school, this kind of continued where I really didn't talk to her that much. The only times I really probably communicated with her and expressed my feelings was when something really bad was happening um, which I mean is good but it usually was resulting from meltdowns that she saw and there was really no avoiding or hiding it so like something that specifically comes to my mind is there was one night when I was going to the bathroom in the middle of the night and it was probably around like two in the morning and I just broke down on the floor bawling my eyes out and woke everybody in the house up so my mom came to check on me and asked what was wrong and I told her it seems so trivial and stupid now but it, it was really um it was really impactful at the time in my life and so I cried because I it was the first time I had felt my thighs touch since I started recovery and so I told her that because there was really once again having to melt down on the middle floor it's kind of hard to explain it um <laughs> if I don't tell the truth so I was honest I was like my thighs touched and you know she was kind of able to talk to me and honestly she kind of 
she responded with laughing because it seemed hilarious to her like her 17 year old daughter's on the floor because her thighs touched like what um and looking back on it now like yeah it was pretty stupid but um that was hard it was hard to see my mom laughing but it did help lighten the mood a little bit and it helped me relax and be like okay maybe it's not as serious as i think and um i kind of moved on and so little things like that were slowly starting to be addressed and I still wasn't talking to her as much as I needed to, but I was learning to talk to her a little bit and learning that her reactions aren't always bad. Like she's not always going to be angry with me if I just tell her. However, I, since I still wasn't talking to her enough, a lot of the depression stuff still wasn't being dealt with. A lot of the eating disorder stuff was getting addressed, but the depression was not. And so fast forward to the, towards the very end of my senior year of high school, I made a pretty serious attempt at suicide and ended up in the hospital, then ended up in a mental hospital. So during this process, once again, my mom felt very betrayed. That was that's the best way I can describe her reaction was just betrayal. She was so upset that like I hadn't told her that I was struggling that much. And so at this point we were told, okay, I have to go back to therapy. I need to start talking again. And we did that for a little while. And once again, it kind of helped to have the mediator there who could help me make sure my mom, I got my point across to my mom. My mom could get her point across to me, but still didn't stick with therapy very long, still just really wasn't my thing. At this point, I had already committed to go out of state for college the next year. I had less than a year to get my life together. And at that point, my mom really did not think I could handle going away to school by myself, which can I blame her? No, but I was, I had my heart set on going out of state to school. And so I asked her, I was like, what can I do to make it so that I can still go out of state? And she basically said, like, you need to find some way to make me trust you. I don't trust you right now. She wouldn't leave me at home alone. She wouldn't let me do anything alone because she just could not trust me. This was really hard. I This is where it really started to hit me that I need to talk to her. And if I don't talk to her, I'm not going to go anywhere with my life. Like, I can't move on. Since talking to a therapist wasn't an option for me because it just didn't work, I really had to talk to my mother about things. And so it took a while to start getting me to trust her to have the right reactions and for her to trust me that I was telling her everything. But we started working on this throughout the summer. Um, and originally because she couldn't trust me, she would physically confirm everything I would verbally say. So every day I would have to tell her how the day went, be honest, and she would physically check. So at this time I was still really struggling with self-harm. And so I would tell her either I did or I didn't cut. And if I did, then she would like be like, okay, and try not to get mad. She was mad, but she would try to check herself a little bit and not get as angry. But if I said I didn't, um, she would, we would do strip checks, which I mean, it's extremely embarrassing and difficult, but it was necessary at the time. And she would confirm that I hadn't cut myself anywhere. And so same thing would go with eating and laxatives. She would find ways to monitor that and check it. Um, and so I was having to get on the scale every day. And eventually throughout the summer, we scaled that back to only three times a week, to only two times a week, to only once a week. Once we hit that point of once a week, as long as I hadn't done anything to disearn her trust, like as long as I was still honest and everything checked out at the end of the week, we kind of, she would then not check. And as long as I continued to be honest, and I was still trying really hard to be honest because I knew that if she ever caught me in anything, my ability to go away to school was gonna be taken away. I wasn't gonna be allowed to do that anymore. As much as that was a really long, long, slow process and it was really hard on both me and her because she had to learn to not have reactions to every time I told her something and I had to learn to be honest and tell her if I did something. And to be perfectly honest, like I still slipped up tons of times that summer. 
but because I was being honest, she felt at the end of the summer that I could go away to school. Now, where I was going away to school, my parents did happen to have a property out there, so and it was only like a five hour car drive away, so they felt like they could come in and check on me when they needed to. And so they did, they came like every couple of weeks, they would drive out for the weekend and just kind of check and see if my men I was, my mental state was pretty congruent with what I had been telling them it was. And like I said, this was hard because I would still slip up. And so my mom had to learn to trust that I wasn't going to slip up too much to put my health at risk, but that it was okay because I could still make mistakes. So I would have to tell her. And it got to the point where I didn't have to be quite as specific with her, which also really helped. In the beginning, I had to be like, Mom, I cut myself here, here, and here this many times. This is what I used. She needed me to confirm that with her. But it got to the point where because I started to gain enough of her trust, I could just be like, I've been struggling with self-harm a little bit. And she trusted me to know that I was handling it the way I needed to. And if anything got too severe, I would tell her and we could take care of it. Same thing with um, purging if it, I could tell her, you know, I've been having a hard time recently and I've thrown up a couple of times or I've skipped a few meals here and there, but it's nothing too severe. Like I've lost a little bit of weight, but I'm going to work on gaining it back. And as long as I was still being honest, she knew that that meant I was still being realistic with myself. I still knew what needed to happen. I still knew that improvements needed to be made. And so as long as she could trust that I understood what I was doing, um, change needed to be made, then she still believed that I was going in the right direction and still progressing, which I was. Um, it's been about four and a half years since I was first diagnosed with an eating disorder, and I'd say at this particular time, I feel about 70% recovered. That doesn't mean like in a month I might jump way further back or I could even feel a little bit above that but right now I feel pretty good with myself and what I'm doing. Yeah so I really hope this video was helpful or interesting or whatever. Um, if you have any questions you can either leave them down in the comments below or if you it's a more personal private question I will also link my Instagram that I use with this account down in the description below so you can private message me there um, otherwise yeah this was just kind of my experience with the whole situation and kind of how I moved in to being able to talk with my parents and I highly highly stress that it's extremely important whether it's your parents that you talk to or if there's a mental health professional who you feel would be easier to talk with it's just important to talk and have that communication um, to really be honest because if you're not being honest with other people there's a good chance you're not being honest with yourself as I discovered the hard way um, being a little bit in denial of how much I was struggling but I mean I can talk to my parents now or specifically my mom I can kind of talk to my dad but he just he prefers to not be fully involved in it and it's fine but if there's a meal that's still hard for me I can tell my parents like hey that was too much food or that is too much food it's making me really uncomfortable and they can work with me to handle that um, and I can talk to my mom about self-harm and it's still not the easiest thing to talk about I don't think it'll ever be the easiest thing to talk about because it's something I struggle with and anything that's a struggle like obviously is going to be difficult but yeah so I hope this was helpful and I guess I will see you guys for my next video